I'm pleased and honored to introduce today's speaker, Mr. Raghi Hussain, Chief Technology Officer and founder of Caviar Networks. He's very special to us because he is an alumnus of ours. He was He was sitting in your chair 14 years ago. He got a master's degree in computer engineering 14 years ago, 1997. So welcome home. And after he finished his degree here 14 years ago, he established himself as an entrepreneur and technology leader in networking and security systems. His first startup was VP Net Technology which designed the first commercial IPsec virtual private network gateways, VPN gateways, used to ensure security of enterprise um, networks. His innovations paid off. VPNet te Technologies was acquired by Avaya in 2001. His second company is Caviar Networks, which he founded in year 2000, just three years after he got his degree from here. Think about it. And you will love this part. And the company's innovations in network processor technology allows it to beat out much bigger competitors like Intel and Freescale. And because we have this brain behind this innovation, let's give him a round of applause. I mean, so proud of this. <laughs> and so, um, seven years after its launch in 2007, Caviar Networks went public, and today the company employs over 800 people uh, around the globe and with offices in Singapore, Taiwan, China, Japan, and India. And they are just getting started. In fact, this year's Forbes magazine named Caviar Networks as the fifth fastest growing technology company in the US. Way ahead of Apple, Everybody knows Apple. What's the ranking on Apple? You got a cool stuff coming out all the time? Only 16 in comparison with the Caviar Networks. What an honor. Let's give him another round of applause. It's <laughs> Raghib serves today as a Caviar Networks Chief Technology Officer, leading his technology research and development he has six patents issued and several pending. And Raghib is also chair of prestigious EE NBC's network benchmarking group, where he led efforts to develop a new benchmark for networking, which help original equipment manufacturers to evaluate the performance of network processors. Besides his achievement in business and technology, Raghib is also very active in the community. He is active charter member of Open Silicon Valley. Open, which stands for Organization of Pakistani Entrepreneurs, strives to promote entrepreneurship and leadership among Pakistani Americans, encouraging them to start new companies, create new jobs, advance new technologies. Raghib's drive, success, and community engagement exemplify the achievement of outstanding San Jose State and Engineering alumni. For his achievement, he received last year's Award of Distinction uh, from the College of Engineering here, San Jose State University. Like many of you in this room, he's an immigrant with big dreams and the willingness to work hard. He is a role model for all San Jose State students in this room. How far you can travel when you aspire to excellence. So now we eagerly look forward to learning his journey from Pakistan to a leader in Silicon Valley and showing our audience, our students here, the path forward. Please join me in welcoming Raghib Hussain, 1997 graduate, founder, and CTO of Caviar Networks. Thank you, well. Thank you. Wow, what an introduction. <laughs> I must say, it feels really great to stand here today, uh, especially being alumnus of uh, San Jose State University. And I must also say it's a great school. 
uh, right in the heart of Silicon Valley. And that sounds simple, but in reality, it's a, it's a big uh, plus over many other school, as uh, I'll, I'll mention, I'll talk in more detail later. Um, but before I start, I would like each one of you to, to remind yourself that one day you will be standing here where I'm standing today. Okay. So today, thank you. So Bell um, asked me to talk about uh, how to get job in today's uh, um, environment. Um, that's, uh, I said, okay, fine, that's a good topic. Um, and she also reminded me that I think the unemployment rate is 11% or something, and which means that um, one out of, uh, you know, um, 10 people will be unemployed uh, or something like that. Um, well, that's one angle to see. Uh, I prefer to look from a different angle. Um, I do not believe that engineers are, are in that, um, so th I think those are somebody who is not engineer who will be in that 11%. So that's something you should keep reminding yourself as you go forward. So, so before I go in, in my presentation, I wanted to take a moment and talk about um, what Cavium Networks uh, is and what do that we do. We, uh, Cavium Network was founded in 2001. Um, we went public um, on NASDAQ in 2007. Uh, we have about 800 employees right now. Um, our annual run rate revenue is uh, 250 million, um, but because of our exceptional growth, uh, which, is, uh, which was 119% last year, um, market uh, sees us very um, positively, um, and, 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 uh, growth, and our market cap um, is somewhere uh, near $2 billion right now. Um, we are actually pioneer in the uh, embedded multi-core processor. We started with 16-core processor when the world was mainly talking about one or two core processors. Um, so that was biggest uh, innovation and uh, uh, leap forward. Um, we, uh, today, our processors are being used by all top uh, networking wireless and security uh, vendors. Um, we have different product line of processors which focuses on networking, um, security, uh, broadband gateway, um, wireless networking, as well as uh, um, uh, storage. Uh, in addition, we also supply um, software which is open source embedded uh, in the Linux based software. So with that, going back to the original question, how to get a job uh, in today's environment, and I say don't get one. Um, it's better that you create one. Because when you look uh, at the market from that, that angle, all of a sudden you, um, you find new energy in yourself and you realize that you are not dependent on anybody to give you a job. And even if you do not succeed in creating one, as a result of that, you will create expertise and the knowledge base which will be very, very well valued by most organization out there. And as a result of that, it will be your decision to choose which one job to join rather than looking for a job for somebody to give you a job. So, so I would say to start with, you, are, you guys are coming out of the school pretty soon, I'm assuming. Uh, and this is the best time in your life in terms of flexibility and the freedom. Now, it sounds odd because because most of the students will say, no, we have so much loan, so much responsibility, and so many you know, um, unknowns in life, and we have a uh, long life to lead, and how can, how can we be uh, most free and more flexible? On the other hand, if you, if you look at anybody's life, you will see, as you go forward, you will keep getting more and more complication in your life. You will have less and less freedom, you will have more and more uh, responsibilities and liabilities. So if any time is the best time to take the biggest risk, this is the time. So just, just when you look at things, keep that uh, thought process in your mind. So b before we go in, in details of what can we do to create a job, um, this is a, a high level picture of what's going on out there. Um, over time, um, uh, t um, our life has, been, has become part of several um, 
devices, equipments, and applications. Um, so now, if, you, if somebody want to visualize what, what is going on, there are so many applications. There are so many things going around. There's, in daily basis, we deal with so many, so many equipment, so many uh, ways of communication that the whole picture has become very, very uh, chaotic and complex, which, which, again, is one way of looking at the picture. On the other hand, uh, uh, as an entrepreneur mindset, you will see that is an opportunity. So every chaos, every problem is an opportunity, which means that this, there are problems to be solved, which means there are people who are feeling the pain and who are willing to pay for that, which means there are businesses to be created. So on one angle, this picture looks very complicated, that there are so many applications, there are so many things. These needs to be communicated with, itself, with each other. They needs to be, the data needs to be, information needs to be communicated over the network. The provisioning and policing, um, policing and the security, all these needs to be applied. And there are other uh, compliance requirement, um, um, other certification requirements. But on the other hand, each one of those problems is an opportunity. So talking about the opportunity, in any time, change creates opportunities. Now, we are today are standing at a point of time where lots of changing are happening around us. Uh, it's, 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 not, it's not just, uh, uh, just like um, um, industrialization revolution where, where a lot of factories were being made or, electrical, or electricity was uh, created, for example, when, when the one big change was that electricity coming. We are at the point, uh, or if you go in 90s, when one big change was uh, internet, uh, things were getting connected through the internet. Um, but if you look right now, there are several things happening around us, and the pace of change is much more faster, which means it is much more um, easier for a, a smaller company because they are nimble, they, are, they can easily, uh, they are flexible, and they can easily change the direction much quicker. It is much easier for a smaller company to, to pick and to uh, do the innovation on uh, bringing the solutions for the problems created by the chain than the much larger uh, enterprises because of the fact that that uh, uh, that um, enterprises has a what I call um, baggage, but on the other hand, that uh, some of you may have read the book Innovator's Dilemma, which means that when you create a lot of things, you need to keep supporting it and you need to keep maintaining it. So it is much harder for you to go back again and create. Uh, completely new things if you're a really big billion dollar enterprise. So, so from that point of view, again, for it is the, uh, a change is a good opportunity for any a small group of people to innovate and to bring the difference out there. Now, I'll talk, uh, there are two big trends going around us uh, these days. One is video. Uh, the other one is cloud computing. I'll talk more detail in more detail about those in, in a bit. Um, but first, let's talk about uh, data center virtualization and convergence. Um, data center is not a new phenomena. It, it, it has been around us for some time, and it is really um, a mechanism where, where you can um, um, share the um, IT resources and and uh, instead of hosting resources in-house, you, you outsource to some um, shared resource by the other companies. Now, um, virtualization is an enabler uh, for that technology because virtualization gives another level of abstraction where you do not need to tie yourself with any particular hardware or set of constraints. You can be more flexible in, uh, in uh, uh, getting the resources that you need. And the convergence is really a com uh, the combination of the networking and the storage. Um, and being able to, in a virtualized way, get the um, amount of resources you need, whether in terms of compute power, whether in terms of the bandwidth, or whether it comes of the storage. So around these um, 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 things which are going on, there are um, complications, because uh, each one of these technology, although it makes life simpler, but creates more problems. So for example, around virtualization, uh, there, are, there are issues of um, um, security um, and um, quality of service provisioning. So for example, if a server is being shared by multiple um, uh, um, application, which is being um, hosted on behalf of different enterprises, um, that 
the guarantee, the guarantee that a, a rogue application in one side will not cause any problem for the other application is a security concern. On top of that, more important concern is having a deterministic performance by that server, which means if I say I gave you 30% of the server, how do I control and maintain that 30% of compute and 30% of networking and 30% of the um, uh, on-server storage is allocated, really allocated to your system? Because um, without um, um, proper management and control of that, it, it, one application can, can take away resources from the other, which, which causes the problem. So there are um, product ideas and possibilities around that area. Then if you look at another big change is happening recently is high bandwidth networks, uh, which is really um, gigabit to the home, uh, which has already um, uh, happening some part of the world and also has a start in US as well. And the other one is LTE wireless, which is uh, going to allow us um, uh, to transmit much higher bandwidth uh, um, data over the wireless network. Um, on one hand, these things are good because as a consumer, it gives us a, us a capability um, to uh, communicate or connect with each other much faster, being able to download our whatever uh, data information or content we want to download or transfer much easily or much faster from our all handheld devices and so on, uh, because the LTE will give us access of hundreds of megabits from our handheld devices. Um, on the other hand, if you look the impact of this thing on the on the network, it is really exponential. It's not linear because now all of a sudden, every individual which is carrying a, a intelligent mobile devices is generating a lot more data, especially with the video-enabled phones. Even my two-year-old is generating a lot more data than I have ever generated throughout my life. So, so that is that phenomena is happening everywhere. And not only happening just on the data creation side, but also on the data transmission side. Uh, because now this video which was created probably is being um, sent to somebody across the sea or something, but it has to go through, through the network. Um, in, in other words, now the job of management and, and SLA implementation for quality of service for the for the service provider is much more complicated because they need to they need to be able to differentiate themselves from just like electricity provider uh, then, the, then instead of providing just the fat pipe they have to be able to say that i want to provide you a, a better quality better guarantee and better latency uh, pipe within my fat pipe and i should be able to charge for that and to do that, they have to they have to um, implement much more uh, complicated um, application, both hardware and software, uh, to be able to identify different use model and to be able to uh, charge according to the use model. So that creates yet another uh, opportunity because traditionally all these uh, equipment uh, in the in the network service provider which are deployed, they used to be just basic um, uh, uh, networking equipment between router and switches, which will, which will just provide you the connectivity and, and at certain level of provisioning at a, at a user level instead of application level. But as we are going forward, um, application aware networking is becoming very critical because now um, not only the user, but I cannot even even um, uh, tell what's the difference in the application within the same within the same type of protocol. So, for example, before you could say, "Okay, well, I will give a higher priority to FTP, and I'll give some certain priority to HTTP traffic, and I'll, I'll give uh, uh, some lower uh, higher priority to voice traffic, and so on." As you move forward with the application becoming more and more complicated it's not that obvious from the lower level protocols which application which because everything is differentiated at the uh, layer seven of the networking. So this is where the equipment has to process much, much more and being able to recognize application and on the behavior of the application to be able to, um, uh, to differentiate and to be able to provide quality of service for a certain ty type of application. For example, for a home uh, user would like to have a service where, uh, let's say it's, uh, it's also working uh, from home or telecommuting, would like to have a service where even when he goes to certain application we're talking to enterprise and so on, that particular application is prioritized over versus a video being downloaded, let's say, by my kid. 
So, so uh, now, because both of these things are done at a much higher layer, at the application layer, it is impossible to make these decisions just by looking at the packets itself. So, so that is why the, uh, the processing requirement and the complication also increases. Now, in addition of that, recently, with more use of the security, um, now guess everything is secure as well, which means encrypted and so on. So to be able to make any sense out of any bits going through the service provider network, they have to um, terminate security as well, which is, in terms of compute, much, much more um, uh, complicated than just being able to looking at the, at the payload and, and just searching for the key, keywords and so on. So, so application-aware network by itself creates a lot more uh, complication, a lot of problems in the in the uh, system, and which in turn creates the possibilities of a lot more opportunities out there. Uh, and then social networking is is the phenomena all of us are using. Some are using more, some are moving, using less. But just if you if you just start looking what is behind it, uh, you will start realizing what are the complication and what are all the issues that needs to be solved. Um, First of all, because social networking, um, the data which was being created on an individual basis, it is being shared and stored on a global basis, which means that the, the, it, the, each one of these uh, um, um, social networking application creates a huge problem for the data storage itself. Uh, that is the that is the first um, very important point. Generally, it is ignored. People kind of say, oh, "Well, the storage is getting cheaper, so it's not that big of a deal." Yes, it is not that big big of a deal if you if it is uh, uh, you know few terabyte of storage. When you go into petabyte and zettabyte, then it becomes a problem. Just uh, I'm not sure how many of you have tried to back up, let's say, a terabyte of hard drive at home, and especially on the one of those USB backup drive thing, and you will realize how long does it take just to, just to try to back up the whole, whole data. Now, imagine how long would it take to back it up uh, uh, zettabyte sort of our data, which is going to happen in the next few years. So, so there are opportunities created not immediately just at the application level on the social networking, but also in the infrastructure level or the platform level, which is behind the scene. But there are people who are working on it, and there are companies which are made just to solve each one of those single problems. It's just that um, who is focusing on what, that's all, that's all that matters. So that is another area um, of which is, uh, massive change is happening in the way we live, the way we do business, and so on. And there are massive impacts of those things in the, in the actual technology behind it. And one final thing which is, uh, I would like to talk is consum consumerization of IT. You may have heard this term several times um, in, in, in different area. Now, it's, it's again, it sounds very simple. Before, let's say, if IT used to give uh, specific devices, a laptop or something, to the, uh, to the workers, um, they want to move away from that, and they want to um, you know, kind of let workers allow their own devices, uh, whether they're phones or whether they're laptops and so on. Um, on one hand, it sounds simple because it reduces the reduces the IT overhead. It reduces the uh, complication where where the, you have to convince worker that you have to use this kind of laptop, you have to use this kind of cell phone, and those sort of a thing. But on the other hand, uh, from the enterprise uh, point of view, it creates yet uh, one more complicated problem because of the fact that uh, that uh, uh, it creates the issues. Of how do you how do enterprise now control and manage their their um, applications, their um, intellectual property? Because if it's your own laptop, you can download their document, you can download things, and then it will be completely out of control. Before, when you walk uh, away from the from the uh, office, they used to take the laptop and and uh, um, uh, phones back. But but now it is it it will not be possible. So there are uh, companies who have started thinking in those line and are uh, looking into creating value. But I I would must say there is still a lot more room there because what needs to be done really is to have a mechanism where. Um, somehow, um, uh, there is a space or sand, a sandbox within your personal device, which is uh, uh, which is 
actually on your device, but which is under control of the enterprise IT, which, uh, um, uh, which again sounds very simple idea, but to be able to manage it and control it and keep it secure where all the documents or all the things which are down, being downloaded on, on your device is, is, uh, um, are all uh, contained within that and uh, later your IT administrator, enterprise IT administrator should be able to remove it if they want it and so on. So uh, there are a lot more software involved and uh, even the hardware involved to, to solve that problem. So that is, again, so the, this is at a high level. I, I, I do not have enough time to go into the details of each one of these today, especially uh, given the topic, but these are the areas which, which are changes are happening, and you can actually uh, look, pick any of these area, and then you can start um, uh, looking, uh, uh, finding the problem in that area and, and see what can you uh, add value in. Few more words about video. Um, so video to connect no, uh, not only the individual but business level. So so on one hand, as I as I said, these days um, every device has a capability pretty much to to generate video um, from your from your computer to to your phone to your um, PSP even has a video or or the iPad or whichever um, whichever device we have around us. Um, uh, if uh, traditionally, if you see the video was being created by some video camera, which was bulky and not very friendly, and some sitting somewhere in the closet, which you take out only on the time when when you go to some special event or or some um, you know uh, outing and so on. But um, these days, video has become so much integrated in our life. It is it is being um, generated, I would say, produced by all of us starting from uh, one or two years old uh, all the way to, to very old um, and, and by different means. Now, that is at individual level. Now, on the enterprise level, video is also very important because enterprise these days, because of the globalization, each company pretty much has offices all around the world. Uh, and then, yes, it's, it's good to have the face-to-face, -face, but, uh, but again, it becomes very uh, complicated or difficult for everybody to keep flying around, and this is where uh, the video communication and especially the good quality video communication is very, very important. Um, in, in, and then the third thing, is enterprise also uses it for, for um, e-learning sort of application. Uh, certain businesses like healthcare use it for uh, doctors use it to transfer the images, which is very high resolution, or or the discuss the uh, case with their other uh, uh, colleagues around the world and so on. Um, so video actually creates uh, a lot of issues, um, and then but at the same time, the, each one of those issues again keep in mind are the are the uh, opportunities out there uh, to, and the problems to be solved. So one uh, um, characteristic of video is a huge bandwidth. Um, so um, it 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 um, there are opportunities to look into how to how to keep the quality of the video good, but still try to reduce the bandwidth um, because um, because the amount of data generated by the video is huge, and and you may need to transfer it across the world or or multiple in a multiple location at the same time in a real time. So th there are opportunities out there related to that. Then uh, uh, there is another um, characteristics of the video, especially in the interactive form, especially when you are doing a corporate level meeting with uh, trying to close a deal or something. It is very important to be able to look at the person's face and expression and so on, and to be able to understand uh, what really matters to them and not matters to them. It is also true in most of the business or customer meetings as well. It, 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 human touch is always there. You need to understand um, what other guy is thinking and so on to be able to come um, to come to the win-win uh, situation. Now, in those situations, the latency is very very critical. So, on one hand, video is uh, data is huge, uh, but on the other hand, the quality and latency is also very very important because uh, if the if you reduce the quality to reduce the bandwidth, that is bad because you may not be able to understand what other person is is. <laughs> thinking at the moment, or or um, if you if you increase the latency, um, which also is bad because you will not be able to use it effectively in an in interactive way. So then there are there are opportunities, and and uh, there are again there are businesses who are working on in uh, on that area, including Cavium Networks, how to 
how to increase, uh, reduce the latency and, and uh, keeping the quality good and but reduce the bandwidth. So those, those, those are possibilities uh, around that area. Uh, and then as I mentioned earlier, there's a huge storage impact because of video. I, I'm forgetting exact uh, specifics of the report there was uh, last year that in, in 2010, the total amount of data created was more than equal to or more than, than, than the uh, amount of data created uh, since the birth of the digital storage uh, industry or something like that. Um, that sounds uh, very strange, but given the way data is being generated, especially through the social networking and through the video, um, uh, video everywhere, the amount of data which is being generating is, is going to keep increasing exponentially, which means the, the storage, data storage problem will uh, keep increasing, not only in terms of just the storage, but also how do you, how do you search a particular uh, data out of it? Because just, if you just need to store for the sake of a storage, it's much easier job. But if you need to store and being able to access efficiently and in a low latency manner later on, this is where the challenges come. And then being able to store it in a secure manner and with such that, uh, such that um, the data cannot, um, cannot be retrieved by somebody else who is not authorized to, store, uh, to access. And then being able to um, also keep it safe in, in case of uh, you know, disaster and so on. So then there are, uh, there are um, w a, a, um, video related things around it and then there are general story related issues around it. Um, again, a good new compression algorithm of video um, will be a good, uh, uh, good innovation out there in that area. And then the video over wireless, uh, again, it's all the same, but it impacts us much more because the wireless is a much more lossy network. So the algorithms can be improved, which, which will allow you to having a good quality video in a, in a reasonable latency, but still uh, being able to transmit in a lossy environment like wireless. A few words about uh, cloud computing. Uh, I think uh, last year there was a complete talk by somebody I'm forgetting on cloud computing. So, I, um, and um, I, I, in in the in the similar uh, setup, but I'm not going to go, of course, in that much detail. And I'm assuming most of you guys are are aware of the cloud computing. But I just still wanted to touch a little bit, just to talk about some of the issues faced by. Uh, created by the cloud computing. Uh, so cloud computing is IT resources that are abstracted so that you can deliver on demand and scale, which means anybody should be able to, uh, to um, uh, get any amount of compute, storage, or bandwidth um, uh, on need basis in a flexible way. Uh, now, there are some companies, there are things going on in cloud computing, but I would say it's early, in early stage. Uh, because ideally, the way it should be, I should be able to get resources from five different cloud provider and being able to um, virtually see it as a unified is, is, is a resource for myself, both in a storage and compute and so on. And I should be able to deploy my application. Now, that sounds good, but to be able to achieve that, there are challenges because the challenge is not only um, being able to manage and connect all these um, cloud services together, but also um, uh, how, how would we take care of the security uh, because different provider will have their own separate um, uh, levels of security and so on, and then they will only talk about uh, the security within their cloud. Uh, how would we come up with a, with a mechanism to have a security and compliance across clouds, and how would we make sure that these uh, uh, rogue uh, 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 services or rogue hypervisor itself may not is causing some, some uh, problem? Um, and then in the next generation of the viruses and, and uh, attacks, uh, cloud attacks are, uh, have already started and it's going to go more and more, um, which means that they will, they will probably uh, look into some, uh, um, some hole in the, in the um, uh, uh, security or provisioning mechanism of, of the implementation of this shared mechanism. And um, uh, those uh, viruses will exploit those, those uh, holes. And, and um, therefore, the whole concept of the way firewalls are today 
are going to change yet once again because of the fact that up until now the concept of firewalls was okay i'm protecting my perimeter within my enterprise well there is no such physical or even virtual parameter anymore because there is no such thing now that you can say or go and in a particular data center cage and say you know what this server is mine there's no such thing anymore and that is the plus side because now you do not have to worry about that server to fail but on the other hand the negative side is this that you do not know where your data is, data is stored now there is a issue of of just general networking security there but then there are issues compliance related over there because of the fact that there may be your um, for example hipaa policy of united states may be different you know that the requirement of the security and uh, store, uh, storing uh, personal data or healthcare related data in in one country may be different and other country may be different now if the server is stored somewhere else are they maintaining all those sort of a uh, requirement or not that is another complication uh, there is a possibility that that compliance itself requires that this these data cannot go beyond uh, certain uh, physical boundary so how would you manage and identify that data that creates yet another opportunity for implementing new software um, which will which will allow um, people to manage uh, these uh, complexities in a in an easier way and and co tenancy is a is a related problem because because when you are when when two uh, different um, uh, applications are in the same um, virtual machine are in the same physical hardware um, uh, much more provisioning and much more control needs to be done so that one cannot uh, impact the other in any in any way um, which is the we are not there yet so there are more uh, innovation needs to be done so uh, all these things are are in uh, transition and as i said that that uh, every change is and it creates a lot of issues which means in turn create a lot of opportunities so what what are the things which are these transition are causing so information storage uh, the ways to improve storage density access time backup and recovery um which means um, there are more uh, innovation needs to be done to how to um, uh, categorize and uh, keep the hierarchy of the storage and how to store it um so starting from all the way from the hardware to the software um to the new um, uh, networking ideas and so on each one of them is 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 uh, uh, has doors open there information processing we are already in a efficient multi core processors um, but um, as the needs um, of the processing keeps going higher and higher and the needs of these massive uh, cloud computing uh, data centers keeps growing the need of um, more and more efficient high compute lower uh, power and cost will keep increasing which means um, there is still room for improvement in that area and and which means there are still opportunities one of the thing over there is increasing memory density because uh, because there is a the current processors have certain limits how much memory can you attach and that is also uh, limited by the technology of the memory density itself how much memory you can you put on a um, on a single die and a single dim and those sort of a thing um there are huge room um of innovation over there uh, both in terms of uh, memory technology as well as in terms of packaging technology how to uh, get over those problem and increase the uh, density of the memory um information sharing uh, reducing latency managing bandwidth um, and uh, management provisioning uh, for virtualized application as i discussed some of the examples before um the yes bandwidth is increasing but as the bandwidth increase um the same bandwidth uh, the same pipe is carrying multiple types of things now and multiple priority of things now so it is important to be able to recognize those application to be able to prioritize those and then provision ac accordingly so that the uh, uh, um, higher priority critical uh, mission critical aspect of life will not be impacted by um, leisure and and pleasure type of activities of life um, so th there are um, still a lot more room in that area to uh, do a lot of uh, uh, especially software application development and so on uh, security isolation as things will become more and more converged the 
issues related to security and isolation will keep increasing more and more. Um, so, so that um, and what it means is this: that uh, there are there will be needs for newer equipments, more hardware, and a newer uh, software application to be able to address each one of these uh, issues, um, which which by itself is a is a topic to discuss. And then, most importantly, energy efficient. Uh, there are a lot more work that can be done in uh, in um, in the infrastructure side, in the in the um, power and the cooling side. So, so um, how do we improve the thermal design of the system? How do we improve the cooling system? Uh, it includes a um, um, variety of the engineering aspect, not just the computer side. It includes the um, electrical, mechanical, and even civil. Because as you go in a bigger data center, how do you construct your overall um, building and how do you construct your airflow and all those those things are very very critical uh, now it comes down to all the way to silicon level where how do you design more power efficient uh, multi-core processors or how do you design a package for the silicon which is um, uh, better thermal uh, uh, thermally better package and so on uh, and then uh, um, for the mobile devices the high density uh, batteries is is there is a lot more room over there as well so yet another uh, way of um, innovation in that, especially related to chemical engineering so that said um, i'll like to talk a little bit about um, about the entrepreneurship itself as uh, requested by uh, by Bali earlier um, so when I look at this topic, so my idea of, of a, a successful venture, um, it should uh, it is combination of the hard work, self esteem, knowing yourself, uh, personal and team characteristics, uh, culture, and and the uh, do what you enjoy. So if if I go in each one of them, uh, there was saying by somebody, am I again? I'm very bad in in mem remembering uh, names or 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 places or things like that. But, but uh, the, the saying is the heights by the great men uh, reached and kept uh, were not attained in sudden flight, but they while their companions slept were toiling upwards in the darkness of night. Well, it is very um, uh, explicit in this statement. What it really means is this, there is no replacement of hard work. Um, the deficiency, each one of us have deficiencies. Um, I have one way, as you will have other way, and so on. So nobody is perfect. Um, now, how do we handle those deficiencies? That's all it that matters. Um, and one way of, of overcoming our deficiency is to put more effort to that and, and uh, be more smart about it and uh, uh, put more, do more hard work about that. So th this is the biggest factor that differentiates a, a smaller company from established bigger company. Because in a, in a bigger companies, uh, it is hard to drive everybody with the same same uh, um, uh, I should say commitment and the same um, uh, esteem of work. Where um, in a smaller it's a smaller group, everybody is uh, working together and everybody is energetic and it is much easier to maintain. It. So that is one big factor which which uh, makes them different. Self esteem it is very important uh, for an entrepreneur to believe in his or her capabilities because everywhere you will go and people will say, who are you? You just did your master's or undergrad or whatever. What makes you think that you can really do a business or establish a um, you know kind of business out there? Uh, what makes you qualified and so on? And, 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 and most of these people actually, they themselves, have uh, you know insecurities and uncertainties in their in their mind they themselves do not believe in in themselves and as a result of that they want to inject the same thing in your mind that hey you cannot do it sort of a thing now so it is very important um, uh, to have that that self esteem to be able to say you know what i can do it sort of a thing um, when i came out of undergrad school in in early 90s at that time actually it was not very common, um, commonly known that that uh, you know, a kid out of school can do some, uh, uh, can be entrepreneur or can can really build a big uh, enterprise. 
However, late 90s and early uh, uh, late uh, 90s and our last uh, decade has proven that a lot more folks out of school have done really great and it really established a big big enterprise out there. So I would say you will have much less pressure on this area now, but uh, but still. Uh, there will be people, your relative, your friends, and especially people around you who will say uh, who will impose their own limitation on you. So, so just keep um, keep uh, in mind that you should keep reminding yourself uh, what one man can do, other can do. Uh, so, so that is a that is a very good uh, uh, thought to keep. But at the same time, knowing yourself. So while one should not uh, should have self-esteem, it is also very important to know your strengths and weaknesses, because uh, um, it is not yours but your core team's capability which really um, drives, um, which really generates the result out there. Um, so find uh, uh, early on what areas your core uh, team is strong in, because it it may be that you you guys are focused in one area more and you have much more expertise. It is better to find cert certain problem in that area and solve using those capabilities rather than trying to do something which is very hard but it is not really um, in your area of interest at all. Um, um, and 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 when you are doing that, um, um, never never think that I know it all. If you do not have, if you're coming across a problem, you do not have expertise. Find help from experts. There's nothing wrong about it. And and in fact, bring people more expert on your team and share your overall uh, ownership. I would say uh, it does not matter because the bottom line is this: that the that the 100% um, ownership of a failure is still zero. It doesn't matter. Um, but on the other hand, uh, maybe 5% ownership of a very big success is still a huge number. So th th think in those lines and and uh, uh, try to. Um, uh, um, try to ev keep evaluating yourself, your team's capability, and don't be afraid of bringing more smarter people, smarter than you yourself, on, on the team because it's, it's a team capability which matters. Uh, personal and team characteristics. Um, so it's, it, one must have the confidence in the skills of capability. It is also critical to be disciplined about what you do. Um, but uh, engineers are generally good in it, but it's still we should make an extra effort, not trying to do um, too many things uh, at the same time, um, and and uh, be d uh, be dedicated and and uh, build a team around yourself with the honest and people with integrity, uh, because that is what is going to uh, going to make a difference. In as you go along, there will be ups and downs, but you should keep your perseverance and keep keep your mind that hey. Um, it is the keep evaluating, but but don't just give up just because it is getting harder. The company culture is also very important for a successful long-term um, business. Um, yes, you will achieve your milestone as you go forward, but again, keep in mind no no uh, uh, achievement is big enough to brag about. Uh, the moment you think that you have made great uh, progress, just sit back and think about it and uh, and think about what could you do better and as a result of that that puts you uh, uh, in a in a automatical in a in a system which which is self driven and it drives the overall team to improve and and do better in the in the overall business now um, there is a, a book by um, again, by Jim Collins, maybe the good to great, and uh, the very important point he kind of conveyed in that is is uh, that the good is the enemy of great, and that is a perfect example of any many, whenever uh, you see you may see people around who will achieve who will do really great and achieve to the first level, and then they'll get stuck over there because the problem is that they think they have done great and they just stay in the in the state of good. Uh, which actually um, uh, stops them becoming the great. So, so just keep in in mind that there is n there is no uh, perfect thing. There is no end. You can keep improving yourself throughout your life. In in general, also apart from business. So, building blocks of successful venture. Uh, the idea. Uh, the idea need not to be uh, out of this world. So this is a very, very critical point. Most of the folks think, oh, I have to have an idea which means which is nobody else has thought of. Completely wrong, okay? You can just get 
a, 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 um, any problem, which is a common, everybody may know that problem, and come up with a solution which is a little different and and little uh, out of the box. It does not have to be um, really, really, um, you know, kind of out of the world idea. However, it is better to have an idea in a bigger market than in a smaller market. So there may be a great idea, but the market may be so small, nobody is willing to pay for that. It doesn't matter how great it sounds. And this is where sometimes engineers get uh, hung up with because they want to just create great things and they do not think uh, that, that uh, how, uh, you know, what is the applicability of this. On the other hand, uh, an idea may be a simple idea, but the impact may be great, the market may be great, and as a result of that, uh, it can create great value. So um, just look around yourself and uh, find a real problem. Uh, it may not be defined as a problem. So for example, when Facebook guys started Facebook, that was not a problem as such. But they created a problem statement by themselves, and they created a solution for that. So they address a need which was uh, needed by the human society at the time, and they kind of leverage on that. Again, looking at the idea, it's not many people did a similar thing. They just did a little bit different. So that is many times you do not have to be the first in the market. You, you can see what five guys did and what did they do wrong, and if you can find something better and which will differentiate you, that by itself can be a good success story. Google and Facebook both are uh, that example. Um, and the team. Uh, it is not the idea that makes great venture, it is the team, actually. Um, even the investors, when they are investing, a good investor, they always look in the team. Because as you grow with the idea, the idea can keep changing. But the thing is, is the team which, which really determines whether you'll be able to uh, execute that idea or not. The first smaller group, 10 to 20 people, really determines how the culture of the and the future of the company is going to be. And this is where it is very, very uh, important to, to be conscious, uh, cautious about it and, and make a balanced team out there, not just focus on engineering or not just focus on, on one angle of the problem because you may evolve into some other problem later on as you move forward. And do what makes sense. Uh, so <laughs> difficult problem of engineers is that we are trained to do to achieve the best, to design the best thing, and the best definition is only defined to us, and which I would like engineering faculty to start changing is, is what may matters from technically best. In reality, in life, what best is, is really the balance of the technical as well as business sense. So, so uh, the, you, you do not really need to design a perfect product, but it's really good enough which solves the problem. So, so if, if, if some, some solution you have which just solves the problem, it may not be the, even, you, even though you knew what else better could be done. In fact, your customers many times will say, oh, hey, by the way, I would like to have this, 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 this. But by the way, they will not pay for it. They will just pay for the basic thing. So then it's not really needed. All you have to do is a little bit better than the others. You have to have an edge. You have to have a differentiation. You have to have a value proposition. But at the same time, you do not have to go crazy about being uh, creating engineering excellence because that's what um, you get. Many engineering uh, engineers started uh, uh, startup. They get trapped into this thing and they keep trying to build the perfect product. And as a result of that, they are not run out of money. So focus on the end product uh, cost, not only the development and the component costs. So how to create your own job? Don't just test the water, jump into it because a lot of people keep thinking that hey. Uh, one day I'll wake up and I'll find a great idea and I'll just do it and I'll just execute on it. Uh, unfortunately, that day never comes. Uh, and then there are other folks who just start things out, they keep trying and they hit ultimately into something which really clicks and they move forward. In this age, actually, it has become much simpler. So for example, these uh, uh, you know, uh, Android and, app and iPhone apps, that is very low cost. Anybody, any software developer can develop those things. Any idea, any value proposition that you come in your mind, you can just start writing, yeah, maybe you will do 100 and 99 will fail, but one of them will be such a hot application that you will make millions of dollars out of it. I have a friend who 
actually in a school, he just wrote uh, an app, and the app was a very simple app, which gives you a VNC equivalent uh, uh, view of your desktop from your iPhone, which sounds very simple concept-wise, but VNC existed. The whole, uh, I must say, in the open source, the whole software probably existed. So probably he didn't do anything. He just took that and, and then converted it into an iPhone app. But as of today, he has made millions of dollars through just one that app, which is a very simple app uh, from the idea point of view. Yes, you had to do it and you had to bring it to the product. That's a different story. But again, it was not like he had to, build, he had to take money or, or uh, VC funding or something to do that. He did it on his own. In fact, in his part time while doing his PhD in, in parallel. So that, uh, that shows you easiness of, of getting something in today's world. Um, so I think it's okay. So my advice to you, do what you like to do. So this is, this is most important thing in, in, in what I have learned in my life. And, and I, this is my advice to everybody. Um, because when you do what you like to do, this is more of a, your hobby. Uh, I think there is another saying I'm against, forgetting who was the person who said that, find a job of, uh, uh, which is your hobby and you'll never have to work throughout your life. Uh, which is really true. I have seen folks who will say, oh, it's Sunday and tomorrow I have to go to work. You know, it's, it's really, uh, and I said, dude, if you, if you have that problem, you might as well quit because there's no point keep doing that job. On the other hand, there are folks who actually wait Sunday night for the morning that, you know, in the morning will wake up and I'll go to do what I love to do. Who will find time in Saturdays and Sundays afternoon They'll just run to the work. Even at home, they'll jump to work because that's their hobby. That's what they love to do. So as a result of that, when you do that, the best comes out of you, and then you actually um, excel much more than anything else you'll do. So when you do that and do, do, the, do your best, uh, rewards will come automatically. Do not focus on running out of money directly. Money comes along the way. Uh, focus on creating a value. Because as you will create value, people will uh, reward that automatically. And then keep your eyes open and brains alert. Uh, I think, in my personal opinion, two uh, biggest gifts that a human being has is the eyes and the brain. And the biggest thing which differentiates us is from other species um, out there is the brain. So as we go around and look around things, as we use uh, technology, as we see things, if we just keep thinking what goes behind it, what could be the issues, what problems can be solved, it will automatically put us in the right path, which will take us to the next step, uh, which means we'll be, able to, uh, we'll be able to create real value for the uh, fellow human beings out there. And as a result of that, we'll be able to create a job for not only for ourselves, but for our uh, fellows, um, human beings as well. Uh, and then we'll never have to find a job. So now in the end, um, just think something Just one comment um, is, is uh, somebody will say, not everybody become entrepreneurs. True. But I, in my mind, uh, uh, most of the success people, full people are entrepreneur, whether they did their own company or not. Because it's, a, it's a more of a thought process that puts you on the right track and makes you successful rather than, rather than just starting the company. Thank you. So I think at this point. So I'm open for question if you have any. Say you have an idea and you're looking for funding. How would you go about how to find funding for your entrepreneurship? So. Um, Again, so it depends idea which field you have an idea and so on. Um, it is a, it is a, I think wrong perception that it is hard to find investor. To tell you the truth, investors are dying to find right team with the right ideas. Or even if there is no right idea, they sometimes give the idea. They will guide you that hey, please, you are thinking is good, but probably you should change it this way. It is very important to build your capable, capable team. So if you think you have team in certain area, and you, you again, uh, focus back to the what important is team than the idea, um, then uh, make sure you have um, right skill sets and so on. 
Um, and then if uh, you can directly approach to those VCs, those VCs are very open to listen. Uh, it's a wrong perception that they will not uh, they will not listen to you. They will listen to you, and they are very um, uh, you know they will entertain uh, your that meeting. What's the biggest challenge of founding a uh, startup company? Um, the biggest challenge of finding a startup is to get rid of status quo, which means I'm living a easy, happy life. Uh, most of the people, let's say if you're not a student or you're already working a good five-figure, six-figure job and so on, why would, it's just a craziness, why would you leave your job and then go take bigger risks and start doing things? So I think the biggest challenge is to convince yourself that yes, I believe in myself or my team and my capability, and yes, I'm willing to take I'm willing to give up my ease of life to achieve something which better which I believe in. Thank you, Ravi. Okay. Thank you very much.